So I guess we're doing phase two, equations and variables, and lecture five, more or less. The number is a little off. So we're going to talk about functions. Functions. But only for our own purposes. We're not going to get all mathy and free calculus or anything like that. Let's just do the first example. Suppose the weekly demand for large pizzas at a local pizza parlor is P equal to 26 minus Q over 40. So I have some equation that tells me how the price changes as the quantity that the suppliers give me as that Q changes. So every week I supply a certain number of pizzas and my price changes accordingly. So P is the price and Q is the number of pizzas that consumers will buy, sorry, the demand, not the supply. Depending on how much the demand is, how many pizzas consumers want, my price is going to change accordingly. Okay, and it's according to this equation. Hey. If the current price is $18.50 per pizza, how many pizzas are sold each week? So they're giving me the value of P, $18.50. $18 what is the value of Q? Well, it comes from this equation. So I plug in the value of P in my equation, 26 minus Q over 40 on the left, on the right. Now I just have to solve for Q. So Q over 40 equals 26 minus 18.5. Let's go over here. Q over 40 equals plus 26 minus 18.5. Seven point five. So Q is equal to one. How much? Three hundred. Sorry, I just heard two people say one. Three hundred. Okay. So if my price is eighteen dollars fifty, then that goes with the demand of three hundred pizzas a week. What about B? If 200 pizzas are sold each week, what is the current price? So my price will adjust depending on how many pizzas people want to buy. So now they give me the value of Q is 200. What is how do I find the value of P? Well, it's right in there. P is equal to 26 minus 200 over 40. So P is equal to 26 minus 5. P is equal to 21. So if the demand of pizzas, demand for pizzas is 200 for a week, then my price is 21. So that equation gives me the relationship between the, the quantity demanded and the price. Let's see number C. If the owner wants to double the number of large pizzas sold each week to 400, what should the price be? So now Q has, val has the value 400. What is the value of P, the price that goes with this demand? P is equal to 26 minus 400 over 40. So P is equal to 26 minus 10. P is equal to 16. So if the demand goes up, the number of pizzas people will buy, 
my price goes down. So the key here is that I have some equation that describes how the price changes with the change in the number of pizzas. So in general, I have a function. This describes a function. A function, let's say f, is simply a rule that takes an input value, number, and gives an output value. So for example, I can see this as a function. I have my input Q. The number of pizza that people want to buy. What is the rule? The rule is I take 26, I minus Q divided by 40, and that gives me my output, my answer of P. So there's a very subtle difference between the equation that I use here and seeing it as input, rule, and output. So as the input value changes, my price is going to change according, according to some rule. So let's see what else do I want to say here. So this guy I call the independent variable. And P I call the output, the dependent variable. Independent because it didn't give me any value, but once you give me the value of Q, the value of P is something specific. So the value of P, the output, depends on the value of Q. Q can be anything. The input can be anything you want, you, but once you give me the input, my, my output value depends on that input. So I have an independent variable and a dependent variable. In general, Uh, I write I write f is a function of x as f and in brackets x. So my output is the f and my input is the x here. So if we refer back to our example, we can write p as a function of q, price as a function of the quantity q, and what is the rule? The rule is take 26 and take away q over 40. So this is just a name for my function. Uh, emphasizing that it's a rule applied to my input to give me an output. So there's a very subtle difference between the two. When I look at functions, all I'm looking at is to emphasize the input, rule, output idea. That sometimes an equation doesn't necessarily, uh, I don't necessarily need to think of an equation like that, but when I talk about a function, even though it's defined by an equation, I'm emphasizing the input, some rule to give me an output idea. Okay. So we're not doing pre-calculus, we're not doing math 12, we're not doing anything fancy, we're just looking at these things to help us answer practical work problems. 
to have some sort of basic skill. All right. Any questions about what I mean by a function? So again, we're not getting too fancy with these things. Now, there could be some restrictions. There could be restrictions on the input value. If I'm talking about Q, my input, as the number of pizzas, a negative number doesn't really make sense. So depending on my setting, uh, the value of Q can't be just anything. People are probably not going to demand a fraction of the pizza. Maybe some of them are. And uh, they're definitely not going to demand a negative number of pizzas. It doesn't make much sense. They give me pizzas, it doesn't make sense. So there could be some restrictions on the input values of A, uh, either from the practical problem that I'm looking at, like the one we did, number of pizzas demanded can't be just anything, or from the type of function type of function. What I mean by that is if I just make up a function without any uh, practical significance, for example, f of x equals x over x squared minus x minus 2, even though that could maybe come from some practical problem, I don't know. So I can just look at this function. What input values can I put in there to actually calculate an output value? Now there is some restriction because I can't divide by zero. If I factor this bottom, two and one, I can't just plug in anything. We can't have x minus two equal to zero, and we can't have x plus one equal because then I'm going to get a denominator of zero, and I can't calculate that. I can't get an output value. So I have two kinds of restrictions. Just something to be aware of. We're not going to go crazy with it. It's not really going to come up. But it is worth mentioning in case you run into it one day. So there are two numbers, two input numbers, without knowing more about where this equation or this function comes from, just looking at it on, for its own sake, there are two x values that I can't plug in here because I'm going to divide by zero. And if I have something like the one in B, they call it G, G, my input is now T, so just a name, name for my function, name for my dependent variable, and is, I'm oh, sorry, independent variable, for some reason, comes from somewhere, square root of 2t minus 1, which values can I not have? What is the restriction on input values? I have to make sure that the thing inside the square root has to not be negative. So 2t has to be at least 1, so t has to be at least 1 half. Without knowing more about the function, that is my restriction of what the input values can be. Now this becomes just an academic exercise. If I don't know where the function comes from, it's just something to be aware. I'm not going to ask you a question like number two in a quiz or a test or anything like that. Any questions so far about the idea of a function? We're eventually going to graph some functions, yes. But again, sticking to the basics, basic straight line. So I'm not going to get crazy because it doesn't it doesn't mean anything to us. We're not going to become mathematicians. We don't care about sketching fancier things. And there are ways to 
sketch functions, if I don't know what the curve looks like, I use a computer to sketch it for me. So we are focusing on things that give us some basic skill and actually help us. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so just to emphasize the idea of input, rule, output that I call a function, something like number three just sort of drives it home so that you're sure what we mean. So I have the following function, just a rule for what to do with my input values. My input is x, what do I do with x? Square it, multiply by 3, subtract it, add 5. For some reason, that's my rule. It doesn't matter if I name the input something else, like z. What do I do with this input? This is what I do with it. It goes wherever the input's supposed to go. So 3z squared minus z plus 5. It doesn't matter what I call the input. x, z, whatever. It doesn't matter. So 2 and 3 is just really for us to just make sure we understand this input, rule, output idea. If I have r squared as an input, there's a little bracket missing on the example sheet. Doesn't matter, what do I do with that? I don't care what this looks like, this is my input. What do I do with the input? The rule says I take the input, I square it, I subtract the input, plus 5. That's what I do with it. Now, I don't care about simplifying that or anything. I'm just emphasizing the input rule output idea. We're not doing pre-calculus or anything. I don't care uh, what this simplifies to. If I have an input of x plus h, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it's called, what it looks like. This is the input. What do I do with the input? Square it, multiply by 3, subtract the input, and add 5. That's what I do with it. I'm just following a rule. So I just want to get used to what a function is actually telling me. It's just giving me a rule of what to do with the input. It doesn't matter what the input is. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm just following the rule. Everyone happy with that? And again, we're not going crazy with, with these things at all. Our goal is, with many of these lectures, we're doing some preliminary stuff, some basics, and then we use that for practical word problems. So the word problems, that's what I want to focus on. That is what skill we need to, or we're trying to learn. How to answer word problems carefully, systematically, and so on. Any questions so far? Any questions? 